So I'd like to thank uh, FPWR and Tanya and Keegan and everybody for inviting me because I think I can honestly say, having spoken to so many other groups, and I've probably been to 25 or 30 PWS conferences over the years, this is actually one of the most cohesive and passionate groups that I've actually ever worked with. And I can tell you that, you know, I, most people who know me know I won't lie, I won't tell you that if it's not true, but we have been amazed at your hospitality and how well you guys work together. So I can tell you it is a group like no other around the, around the world, basically. So... So a lot of people talk about anxiety, and I've actually heard over the years people say that, you know, kids with Prader Willie, they're not anxious. I would completely disagree with that, and I don't think that anxiety has a lot to do with food sometimes. Sometimes it does, but it's interesting to me all the times that it doesn't have to do with food. So in the general population, there's been a couple of prevalence rates that anxiety is actually the most common psychiatric disorder in the general population, ranging about 18.5%. That's actually a lot higher than I even thought. So the deal is, is in, given in any year, about 18.5% of the population deals with generalized anxiety. It's really hard to detect in people with developmental disorders because it doesn't always look the same. It's not like they sit around, you know, going, oh, I feel so worried and anxious about things. But these behavioral outbursts that we often see, I think, are related to anxiety. The idea that things should stay the same, they should be predictable and consistent. It's not realistic, but that's actually what they want. And so we think that it actually drives a lot of the repetitive behaviors that we see from parents who say that my kid likes to do things over and over and over it kind of helps dissipate some of that anxiety. Even things like skin picking sometimes can actually kind of dissipate some of that anxiety. So we think that a lot of these repetitive behaviors have something to do with that. Um, there's a lot of different ways to measure anxiety. A lot of people use questionnaires and things like that. Again, there's problems with the fact that when you look at anxiety, your parents often don't know if you're anxious. And if you think about your kids, sometimes it's really hard to figure out what exactly is going on in their heads that actually, you know, that you could determine what makes them anxious. So we kind of felt like, for us, it was really important not to just give questionnaires and say, you know, my kid does this, my kid does that, my kid does this. So we actually do a lot of observational things, and we do some pretty significant interviews with parents, but also with kids and adults with prader willi syndrome, so that we can actually see what kinds of accommodations people make across settings. And the fact that we interview and see so many of these guys, we have a pretty good idea of what's anxiety and what's not. So as far as us, we actually have seen about 250 people with prader willi syndrome. I'm actually talk a little bit of data that we have from the research study. So we have, a, in this group, from what we've analyzed, about 182 people who have prader willi syndrome. And it's a pretty big age range. They go down to four, and they go all the way up through 62. So the deal is, is there are a lot more adults living with prader willi syndrome, and they're living very successfully. And I think we need to really focus on that. Uh, about 109 of them have deletions, 70 UPD, three with imprinting mutations. Um, and we do a lot of questionnaires, but we actually do these really long psychiatric interviews. And for a while, it was kind of like, wow, this is a lot of work. But what we found has been incredible for yielding results about what exactly is going on. What does the behavior look like? What does it do? And when is it you know, kind of open for intervention? Because I think for a lot of people, we don't think about when we can intervene. But there's some really critical periods. If we could actually tap into those things, we could actually do more good than any other time. So some of the externalizing behaviors in PWS, a lot of people know these, temper tantrums, physical and verbal aggression, stubbornness, oppositional, the idea that when you say anything, even if it's the sky is blue, your kid with Prader Willi will go, oh, well, no, actually, it's really more gray today. It's like, it doesn't really matter what you say, they like to oppose that. So there's lots of techniques that work with those things. And so I tell people, you don't actually have to do a lot of like statements, you just kind of like give these open-ended things that it makes it a lot harder to argue with you about. But skin picking, a lot of sensory behaviors that we see, and it used to be that we would say that, you know, kids with Prader Willi do have these food things, they do a lot of sensory things, and they do a lot of repetitive behaviors, but even things like impulse control, being inattentive, irritability, and annoyance. And so the deal is, is they get extremely irritable about things not going as planned. But some of the things we can't really see are things like anxiety, the insistence on sameness, rigidity, perseverative thoughts, poor insight, and worry about scheduled events. It's not always meals, and it's not always food. It's a lot about school schedules, when people are going to be home. They can be very upset about small changes that most people can let go, and they're easily cited. We've started to notice there's a lot of overlap between people who have autism and people who have Prader Willi syndrome, and that's not to say that people with Prader Willi syndrome all have autism. But there's a lot of autistic features, and that insistence on sameness and really being annoyed at little changes in the environment are some of the things that we think overlap with Prader Willi syndrome. But what doesn't seem the same is, is most people with Prader Willi syndrome are socially motivated in some way. 
They like to be around people for the most part. They enjoy that. It doesn't mean that they always want to, but it means that they're actually a lot more social than people with autism. But there's definitely a lot of overlap. So we've actually been starting to study people with autism to see what are the similarities and what are the differences. So what does anxiety look like? Again, this kind of stuck perceptive behavior. It's the fact that your kid will ask you a question 300 times about the same thing, and you find yourself going, my God, don't they know the answer to that? Invariably, they do know the answer to that, but they need to ask you over and over about when things will happen, how it's going to be, who is it going to be with, and how is this going to affect me, and you at the end of the day feel ex exhausted by the constant questions. But even things like vocal and motor tics, a lot of parents will say, my kids don't have any tics, and I go, what is this that they are doing when they feel excited? And they're like, oh, yeah, maybe a tick. So we've really started to kind of categorize these things and try to figure out what exactly they do and what they mean. But things like cutting paper, playing with strings, copying words, flipping book pages, all those things are kind of this idea that they get really stuck on an activity and they have a hard time moving on. But even irritable, annoyed, impulsive behavior can increase when they're anxious. You'll notice that they kind of act out. They may say something. They may have outbursts that really they don't that seem to come out of nowhere. But, and they can lead to aggression. So we feel like a lot of the anxiety is like a pressure cooker. It's like I can handle it for so long, and then all of a sudden I blow the top, I get really mad, I scream, I yell, I cry. And sometimes you guys will notice it's like a hurricane. After it's all over, it's like it never happened. Not to you, mind you, but to them. So that's what we want to kind of figure out what exactly is going on. And it's really hard for them to cope with intense feelings. And these are like intense feelings of, I thought I was going to go to you know, school today to do this. The teacher told me there's now a new schedule. Or, wow, we've got a field trip planned. They have a hard time dealing with changes in the environment.